Hello, I'm happy to be with you here today. So I'm going to jump right into this talk with this first question. Do we really need to be concerned about antibiotic resistance in ag settings? And the answer is an unequivocal yes. We all need to take an active role in understanding and addressing this problem. Okay, however, it's not uncommon um, for scientific discussions that aim to critically evaluate resistance to sometimes be perceived as rejecting the idea that there is a problem. And I just want to be very clear um, that that is not the case. That's not what I will be doing here today. So when we look at most discussions regarding the veterinary use of antibiotics or the related issue of antibiotic resistance, there are many confounding issues. Science is only one piece of a much larger puzzle. Sometimes we think we are talking about resistance when really the discussion is about these other issues. Um, the side issues especially can influence discussion, people's ideas of good and bad, the ethics of meat eating and vegetarianism, animal health and welfare, people's ideals, uh, pictures in their head of what farming should be or should look like. And advocacy, um, which uses selected facts to advance an agenda. Now, the agenda may be good and noble, but the advocacy, it takes what we know and it mixes it with what we think and what we believe. Sorting out these pieces can sometimes be tricky. So for a short time here today, I'm going to ignore all of these other real life issues and move forward looking just at the science part of this puzzle. First, a brief aside dealing with nomenclature. The vocabulary can be confusing. refer to the infectious disease agent. So uh, in agricultural settings, we're looking at all bacteria, not just the disease-causing bacteria. And all bacteria can be resistant. The third thing that people mean when they talk about resistance are the resistance genes. These are the DNA instructions that code for resistance. They're usually found inside, packed inside of the bacteria, but they can also be traded like recipe cards between different bacteria. And just like when you share a recipe, then you have a copy and your friend has a copy, it's that same dynamic with the horizontal transfer of antibiotic resistance genes. So with nomenclature out of the way, uh, looking at the problem, given that we want to reduce antibiotic resistance in ag settings, and everyone believes this is a good goal. The question that comes to my mind from an applied standpoint is, OK, what's the target we want to set for reduction? In order to answer that question, well, we need to know what's a normal or natural level of antibiotic resistance. Is it zero? How low can we go? Is it realistic to think that we can completely eliminate antibiotic resistance from ag settings? I think the public perception in general is that it is zero. However, soil scientists, I work now with a lot of soil scientists, they know that antibiotics come from soil bacteria and can be naturally occurring. So let's take a few moments and look at what we already know about normal or natural levels of antibiotic resistance. We know that antibiotic resistance is ancient. At the time of the woolly mammoth, there was already antibiotic resistance genes. They took ice cores from 30,000-year-old permafrost, found genes that code for resistance to modern antibiotics. We 
know that antibiotic resistance is found in pristine habitats. This is a picture from a 4 million year old cave in New Mexico. They took soil samples and grew bacteria that were resistant to 14 different modern commercially available antibiotics. So no human impact for 4 million years, they still found antibiotic resistant bacteria. We know that antibiotic resistant bacteria can be found on meat from organic antibiotic free animals. There are a number of these retail studies out there. Sometimes they find a difference, sometimes they don't. It depends on where they look and uh, like Jeannie was saying, what they measure. In this instance, they were looking at Mar Martha, methicillin resistant Staph aureus. It's one of the true superbugs that kills people in hospitals. And here, they found no difference between meat from conventionally raised animals and animals raised without antibiotics. We know that antibiotic resistance is common in environmental samples. Researchers from Canada have sampled soil from across the globe and found antibiotic resistance in all of them, even the ones from pristine sites. They propose that soil is a reservoir of resistance, including multi-drug resistance. In my own lab, we've done a similar study on a regional scale looking at antibiotic resistance in Nebraska prairies. So in Nebraska, over 90% of the land mass is devoted to agriculture. Our studies in ungrazed, Native Nebraska prairies provides a baseline for comparing to ag impacted sites. And as with the Canadian work, we found antibiotic resistance, including multi drug resistance, in every sample that we collected. And that paper is also in a special issue if you happen to be interested in following up on it. Uh, finally, we know that antibiotic resistant bacteria are found in organic farming systems. The conclusions for this particular study, I think, have broad applicability to the topic we're discussing today, and that even in the absence of the farm use of antibiotics, antibiotic resistance um, persists or is present. And looking at the information from the slides that we just went through, these findings, they suggest that approaches in addition to prudent antibiotic use are going to be important in effectively reducing resistant bacteria populations. However, as educators, as outreach, professional, outreach professionals, you are not going to have the luxury of just existing in the science bubble. Whenever you discuss antibiotic resistance with whoever you discuss it with, you are necessarily going to need to navigate all of these other components of the discussion. So our time today is short. Um, I'm not going to take the last few minutes to take a closer look at two sets of infographics uh, with the idea of looking at uh, are these things, are what they're telling us true? And the short answer is that the majority of the individual facts that are stated in the graphics are generally true. However, the, however they're often constructed in ways that have strong implied messages that are misleading and not necessarily true. We could spend a whole day discussing the information in just one of these. This is just going to be a quick glimpse into how these primary sources of information for most people mix selected facts. This is the first set of infographics. I want to draw your attention to the use of the words such as unnecessary. These are the common layout, the unnecessary use of antibiotics, bacteria become resistant, they travel and make people sick. Here it's portrayed as over. Oh, the messages. So let's see. We have the infographics. People are focusing on this idea of the, the unnecessary use of drugs. And, and the, the message that comes through, if you were to ask people after reading those infographics, and, well, the problem is this unnecessary use. It's, it's the misuse. And uh, I'm going to disagree with that uh, slightly, a detail here on the next slide. The fact is it's not the misuse of the drugs that's the problem, although misuse does occur. The fact is it's any use of the drugs that causes resistance. The bacteria do not care if the motive or justification for the drug use was sound and reasonable or abusive. Even when the drugs are used 
prudently, they still enrich for resistant bacteria. So why do I care about this little detail, the unnecessary part of it? Well, if the implied message is that the problem is the unnecessary use, well, then the implied solution is, well, if only farmers would be more responsible with drug use, antibiotic resistance would not be a problem. And this implied solution, it's actually an implied accusation and a very hard-hitting one at that that attacks people's integrity. This kind of implied accusation may motivate people who are not involved in agriculture to take action, to fund studies, but it's untrue. And in the end, it damages communication, makes it less likely to involve critical stakeholders in developing sustainable long-term solutions. This second set of infographics highlights an often repeated statistic Eighty percent of antibiotics um, are used in animals. Here they say on factory farms. Eighty percent overuse. Here it's eighty percent given to animals raised for food. Eighty percent. Uh, here the number is slightly different. We have some variety. Seventy percent. Um, and if we uh, ignore for a moment the implied inaccuracies associated with the factory farm language and ask if the number is in general correct? The short answer is yes. It depends on how you calculate things. There are factors such as Dean mentioned in his um, talk about which drugs are classified as, as antimicrobials or antibiotics. Um, however, there's, there's multiple ways to look at this same data, data set. The inaccuracies, the, the outrage that some of the ag producers feel when they see these infographics, is the problem is not with what's explicitly stated, but with the implied messages that accompany the graphics. If we consider for a moment the size difference between a human child and a bull, the fact that if both were sick, the bull would require more antibiotics than the child seems obvious. So then as he suggested, the Animal Health Institute has taken the same data set, looked at it from a pound-for-pound pound perspective. Pound-for-pound, pound, humans and their pets use 10 times the amount of antibiotics that is with, than what is used in food animal production. This is the same data. They both use the same raw data set. Both are true in what they're stating, but with different implied messages. So that's what I have for today. Take home message is that antibiotic resistance, it is an important problem. Looking at background and baseline information will provide us a practical place to start when evaluating how to best, best measure and solve the problem. How well do different ag best management practices work? Some of the public information um, that's available on antibiotic resistance is advocacy-based. So there are strong implied messages that may not be true, and this may tend to alienate especially people in the agricultural community. However, despite these inaccuracies, and although it can be challenging, it's very important that the ag community take an active role in the national discussion regarding antibiotic resistance. Thanks for your time, and um, please feel free to contact me with any questions, comments, suggestions.